Hi, in this second video, we're going to be looking at how to um, record velocity, bed load, and gradient. Velocity measures the speed of the river traveling downstream. You can use an instrument called a flow meter if you have one, or you can measure a distance of 10 meters and then time how long it takes an orange to travel this distance. I repeat this three times, ideally measuring from the left, middle and right side of the river. Release your orange one or two metres upstream as a start point. This allows the orange time to get up to the speed of the river before you start timing. When you've recorded three timings, then calculate the average speed. Divide the distance, in my case 10 metres, by the speed and this will give you velocity in metres per second. Gradient records how quickly the river loses height as it travels downstream. To do this, you will need a clinometer and two range poles. Position the range poles in the river, one four metres downstream of the other. Place the range poles lightly on the riverbed, but take care not to put them on top of a rock or anything that raises them above the natural line of the riverbed. The person holding the downstream range pole places the, cl the clinometer at the transition between the red and white on the range pole. They look through the clinometer to line up the horizontal line on the screen to the matching transition between the red and white line on the upstream range pole. Then you can take a reading of the gradient. The bed load is the material carried along a river and deposited on the river bed. Usually we would expect the bed load downstream to be smaller and smoother than upstream. Collect 10 stones from the river bed at equal intervals across the river. I often like to do this while I'm taking the cross-sectional measurements and then line them up from left to right on the river bank. Take each stone in turn and record its length along its longest axis. Then, using the powers index to roundness, record how angular or how round the stone is. Take care to put the stones back in the river carefully afterwards, as invertebrates may be living on them. Take plenty of photos of your site, but before you leave, also take a few minutes to draw a field sketch or plan like mine. You may record features in your sketch that get lost in the shadows of a photo and you can add your own notes to it. I hope you enjoy getting out and into a river. I found that one of the most important things about enjoying yourself doing river studies is making sure you're physically comfortable. So dress for the weather and in Scotland that means pretty much at all times of year bringing warm, waterproof and windproof clothes. In winter, if you're doing field studies, it's also really important to wear gloves because you have your hands in and out of the water all day. And if you can't warm them up pretty quickly, then it can be pretty uncomfortable. I found also that almost every time somebody gets soggy feet. So bringing a spare pair of socks is a good idea too. I love doing river studies. I love doing field work. It involves getting out of the classroom and sometimes things don't go quite as you plan. The river's a little higher, it's a little flashy, um, your equipment doesn't work out as planned, maybe your orange during the velocity test just disappears down the river. But that's part of the challenge and that's part of the fun. And anyway, you can't really learn about a river unless you get into one.